right, so today we're gonna to be looking at lofts. This is a powerful feature and a lot of people are sometimes confused about how to use them. Lofts will allow you to connect dissimilar shapes and the software will attempt to blend between those. In this case, we're looking at a circle and a square and it's not a very complicated shape, but as you can imagine, trying to model this in any other way would be quite difficult. The feature itself has some additional capabilities like center line and edge guide rails. I've added a center line guide rail here, which is simply a straight line, so it doesn't make any changes at all to this geometry. But if I use an edge guide rail, and those edge guide rails are curved, as you can see here, we can manipulate the shape as it traverses the space between the first profile and the second profile. This is extremely useful, and you can get some really wacko shapes out of this if you do it right. When creating these edge guide rails, or even the center guide rails, you need to make sure that these actually pierce each of the profiles along the way, otherwise it won't work. Now there are some other features in here that you need to know about as well, because when we're going from one profile to the other, we have guide rails that sort of define how the shapes blend into each other, and you can grab these and manipulate these, which allows additional control of the shape generated by the software. Now up until now, I've only been using these two profiles, but I don't want to give you the idea that lofts only work between two different profiles. If I go in and turn on a third profile, I can show you in the next example that I can actually connect three dissimilar profiles or similar profiles if you would like and create even more complicated shapes. Now remember, when doing this, it's just like before, if you have guidelines, the guidelines have to pierce each and every single profile, otherwise they won't work. The other thing is, of course, these profiles don't have to be in a straight line. We can go around corners, and if I don't use a guideline, it will just try to make a linear connection between the two. But here, I've created a center line guide rail, which is a 90 degree bend with a nice little round in it. That kind of gives the shape that a lot of people would like to see in ducting or piping or all sorts of things like that. Another option that's poorly understood is the connection type associated with each of the profiles. This defines in which direction the surface emanating from that profile actually leaves that profile. The strength parameter determines how long that angle is maintained. So you can get these kind of pin cushion shapes if you like, all that sort of stuff. It's another way to manipulate the shape that the software is generating. Up until this point, I've done all this with sketches, but lofts work equally well using the edges of existing geometry. These two can even be combined whenever you need to, and there's no problem in doing that. Just like everywhere else in Fusion, when you create geometry in this way, you'll have the option to create a new body, join those bodies, do all the stuff you'd normally be able to do with those geometries everywhere else. Sometimes this can be a really nice way to figure out how to connect two dissimilar parts with brackets or something like that very easily. Lofts are available in the solid environment, but they are also available in the surface environment and don't forget, they are even available in the form environment. The options are the same, the behavior of the software is very similar, and people use this to create sheet metal parts or complex organic surfaces all the time. Problems occur with lofts when you get what's called self-intersecting surfaces, like when I pull this rail all the way over such that the geometry created wouldn't really make sense as a singular volume. Here I'm purposely creating a poor centerline guide rail. Notice that I'm using the project feature in the sketch to actually make sure that those central points are available in my sketch. That's something you need to do to make sure that these guide rails actually pierce each and every profile. The path I define with this spline coming up is pretty extreme and it's gonna be really difficult for the software to sweep that circle over to that square in any kind of meaningful way without actually cutting into itself multiple times. And this is why you get an error. It does try to give you some sort of visualization of what's going on, but you can see it's just messed up all over the place. More realistic guide curves and additional profiles may help you. And the more complicated your profiles are, the likelier it is you're gonna need some of those or even all of those features in order to get your shapes the way you want them to be. Lofts are an extremely powerful feature inside of Fusion 360, and I hope this video has helped you out. Good luck.